Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be discussing Grasshopper versus Dynamo, which on the face of it seem like very similar programs, but actually have very different use cases. We'll be discussing their strengths and weaknesses, their pros and cons. So by the end of the video, you'll be very clear on which to put your efforts into if you're just starting out with either of these programs. This is just my opinion of these two softwares. And this opinion is based on from everything that I've seen in the 10, 15 years of working with these processes and computational design. Please feel free to comment uh, below. It would be great to have your input and to start a discussion about how you use these programs and where you see the future of our profession going. So let's dive right in. So this is Grasshopper versus Dynamo, and I've put here in brackets for architects. Uh, you can extrapolate these ideas out for what a in, whatever industry that you're working in. Um, this could be landscape design, interior design, engineering, you know, whatever it is. But these opinions that I'm sharing are really just based upon my view of all of these workflows from an architectural point of view. And everything that we are doing as computational paradigm designers over the last 10, 15 years. So to really understand Grasshopper and Dynamo, we really need to actually understand the host software that each of them are working in. So they're both plugins for two respective pl programs in the design industry and architectural industry. Grasshopper is a plugin for Rhinoceros, and Dynamo is a plugin for Reddit. We'll go through the strengths and weaknesses of each program individually, but the key similarity between these two pieces of software, Grasshopper and Dynamo, is that they are both node-based algorithmic modeling tools in that we are creating relationships between objects and processes and data in one way or another and using this to drive changes within our host program. So in Rhino, we're using this to create more complex geometries, whereas in Revit, we're usually using this to drive changes within the BIM environment. So Rhino, therefore, and Grasshopper is all about NURBS-based three-dimensional modeling. This is complex pieces of geometry. And, uh, and the way that Rhino, Rhino resolves these geometrical problems and calculations is very, very different to how a program like Revit would. Revit is a BIM program, BIM building information modeling, and its use case really revolves around building design and documentation. It's great at creating documentation for buildings and coordinating that design with other disciplines. So the strengths of Grasshopper and Rhino really are around advanced NURBS-based modeling. And because of this, because it's all tied to Rhino's geometry engine, it is far, far quicker than Dynamo at resolving geometrical problems. There is, with Grasshopper, we have a large amount of specialist plugins. These are environmental, environmental analysis or other simulation tools. Um, and these have a huge and robust and active community supporting the, their development. And lastly, Grasshopper has this flexibility between different data types inbuilt into it, which allows for more creative problem solving. It's a much more intuitive platform in order to problem solve geometrical issues. Dynamo, on the other hand, is very tightly integrated into the Revit API. It's specifically tailored for these BIM workflows, and it has these extensive libraries of nodes and scripts to automate a lot of repetitive tasks that we have to do in Revit as architects and designers. Um, and it also has a very active community and lots of resources available to do this. The weaknesses of Grasshopper and Dynamo really come down to their interoperability. Grasshopper is, has very limited integration into other softwares, i.e. Revit. And the other weakness of Grasshopper is that it can be quite a steep learning curve for newcomers, and it can be quite intimidating to approach problem solving using the software. Dynamo, on the other hand, has very limited integration into non-Revit software. So everything that it does is integrated into Revit and is resolved through Revit, which means it's very difficult to design complex geometries using Revit and Dynamo, as this is all based on Autodesk's geometry engines. Dynamo is also Revit version dependent, so whichever version of Revit you are using, you will have to align your Dynamo files with that version of Revit. So now we've seen the pros and cons of Grasshopper and Dynamo. Grasshopper on one hand is very good at complex modeling, simulations, environmental analysis with all the plugins. Whereas Dynamo on the other hand is very good at building documentation and automating BIM processes within the Revit environment. The problem that we've had for years as architects is this workflow problem between Grasshopper and Revit, Rhino and Revit. 
there's various ways to exchange data from one side to the other, but they've always been quite convoluted and never very direct. So what this means is we have all of these four programs kind of having to work to and talk to each other in one way or another, giving rise to a lot of inefficiencies and potential errors in our workflow. The solution to this problem is a few years old now, but it's still in version one. And this is Rhino inside Revit, which is giving us the ability to use Grasshopper and Rhino within our Revit session. I did a whole other workflow um, YouTube video about this. So if you check the links below, you'll be able to find this. What this is really doing is allowing Grasshopper to integrate finally into Revit in a very direct way. So we can build and control Revit elements directly from our Grasshopper scripts. This is a game changer of a workflow when we're using Grasshopper to link Rhino and Revit because we get all of the complex modeling capabilities of Rhino and all of the complex documentation processes within Revit all connected together through Grasshopper. All of those workflows and automations that we were previously using Dynamo for, we can now start integrating this into Grasshopper. But this is still all in development. Dynamo has been around a long time. So all of these tools and automations that have been created will need to be made again, but in a Grasshopper environment using Rhino inside as they link between Rhino and Revit. But this is the process that I see is going to happen over the next few years. Dynamo's utility and function is slowly going to get replaced by a fully Grasshopper connected workflow. And the thing that needs to change is a little bit about our mindset because we always associate Grasshopper with very complex forms and geometries. That's what people associate it with and that's what we think it's all it's good for. It's creating very, very complex, nearly unbuildable projects. What I'm advocating and what I think is going to happen and I, what I think we'll see over the next few years is parametrics and computational design that goes beyond complex geometries and form finding, beyond what we usually see Grasshopper used for, and actually using these tools and processes with Rhino, Grasshopper, Rhino inside, all linking through to Revit through its API, we can develop our normal pieces of architecture, and this can extend what we do as architects in a general sense. So if you're weighing up about whether to learn some Dynamo or learn some Grasshopper, um, it really comes down to the utility of what you're looking for. Dynamo is very tightly integrated into Revit. So if it's only Revit automations that you're looking to do, then Dynamo is going to be a great choice for now. Grasshopper, on the other hand, slightly steeper learning curve, but it's because it's tightly integrated into Rhino, we can rationalize far more complex geometries and tying this in with all of our other simulations makes it a very, very powerful piece of software to learn. Adding to that, having Rhino inside, I think we're going to see Dynamo slowly be replaced by fully Grasshopper processes. So I hope you found this video useful. Grasshopper and Dynamo are both equally very powerful pieces of software. However, I think over the next few years, Grasshopper is going to overtake. So this is where you should put more of your efforts. All of those skills that you have as a Dynamo user already are wholly transferable to Grasshopper. Um, just the way the data structures work is slightly different between the two, but that's a whole other video. So that's it for now. Please let me know what you think. If you have a different opinion on how you've been using these softwares as well, I'd be very interested to learn. Don't forget to follow our channel and reach out if you're interested in any of the Grasshopper coaching programs that we run. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.